Larry, Ernie was no stranger to controversy during his time in the four car. There was Darlington in 1990 uh, in just his second race for you guys, then the first Talladega race in 1991, then Pocono later that year. Was his aggressive something that the two of you had talked about maybe trying to rein in, or were you content to just let Ernie be Ernie behind the wheel? Well, being content caused us caused a lot of problems. Uh, Ernie was a really hard headed and strong minded. Uh, I, you know, I felt like he listened to me some, but he would still it was easy for him to get in trouble. Uh, he was always trying to push it, you know, over the to the edge, or maybe not over the edge, but yeah. And a lot of times it went over the edge and. Um, and you may have a question about it, but I remember they were talk, there was talk about him kicking us out of racing that year. Had you heard that? I, I knew that it was getting pretty touchy. Yeah. Well, you know, um, Kyle Petty broke his right broke his uh, leg, and then uh, Neil Bunny got hurt at uh, the first wreck we had in Darlington. Darlington. Yeah. There were some people got hurt, but, you know, it takes two to tango. Uh he was racing side by side with that car that when we wrecked at, at Darlington uh, for five ra- for five laps, and he was too hard headed to give up. And and you can't, I mean, you can get on the radio and say something, but you can't really at that time say something to somebody and and they'll listen. But uh, he was he was probably raced over his head, but that's probably what made him so good later. Yeah. Also. Yeah. And. Um, but I remember we went to Talladega. By the time we got back to the second Talladega, everybody was up in arms. I don't want to get hurt driving one of these race cars any more than anybody else does, and this looks like the kind of guy that could hurt you. I think it's to the point maybe NASCAR needs to take a look at it. Uh, you know, it seems like he comes out, he doesn't get wrecked. I like or anything, he's a good guy, but, but I'm, damn, I'm getting tired of getting swept up in all his accidents. The biggest problem with Ernie Irvin is he has a lot better equipment than he's a driver. I get to the racetrack early. I always go in with the race team. Uh, they send somebody over from Bill Francis' office to see me. They, he wanted to see me. So I go over and I go in. And uh, Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt, um, From down in Tennessee, what's the name? Um, see those. Two, let's see, it was Petty, Earnhardt, and Jaws, Daryl, Daryl, Daryl Walter. Yeah, we're sitting there, and Bill. So come on in, Larry. <laughs> Bill, straight up. I mean, I'm telling you, I loved him to death. He he was <laughs> listen, nothing phased him. Didn't seem like he. There was he, a greeting committee, wasn't it? I'm telling Good you, not and. And, you know, I hadn't had that much one-on-one with any of those guys. Uh, I really didn't know them. And they and, uh, said, uh, Bill said, Larry, these guys want to kick your race car driver out of racing. They think he's uh, too reckless, hurting too many people. What do you think about it? And he and I answered. I said, Richard Petty, you've hit every SOB that races around the racetrack. <laughs> I said, you've wrecked him. I said, Daryl, look how many people you've wrecked to win. And I said, Earnhardt, they'd follow you to the toilet, and you wreck everybody that gets around you. If they won't let you buy them, you're going to knock them out of the way. And you all are in your s- squalling about this little old boy out here trying to make a living because you all can't beat him. I said, I'll talk to him. They said, well, would you, uh, Mr. France said, would you send Ernie over here when he comes in? I said, yeah. So that was it. I left. Well, when I, after I said those things, Bill France said, well, what do you think about that, boys, to the, to the three guys there? And nobody really said anything. They didn't, really, they didn't say anything. So I left because that meeting wasn't going anywhere. So. I went back and I told Ernie, I said, now Ernie, I 
said, these people are serious about kicking you out of racing. I said, you going the best thing that I can think of, if you get up in the driver's meeting, ask for it before the driver's meeting, tell me you'd like to say something and tell everybody that you're sorry if you've hurt people and driving over your head a little bit or whatever. And just, uh, and I said, by doing that, you're putting it on them. I've talked to a few of the drivers this week and um, some of the car owners and, um, you know, I've lost a lot of respect. I've lost the respect of a lot of drivers and a lot of um, car owners in this garage area. And that hurts. Um, I've uh, drove a little bit over aggressive some. I'm going to work on trying to be a little more patient and want to earn everybody's respect back. I like to be um, liked in the garage area and um, appreciate maybe if you guys give me a shot at it. And I definitely want to be everybody's friend in here. And you know, Buddy Baker wrecked us that race. This, yeah, it, I guess, I don't know if he meant it or not, but it looked kind of suspicious. So, so getting up in the driver's meeting was your idea? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, what was his reaction? Ernie's just like this. You know, he's just happy-go-lucky. He, he said, well, okay, that's what you think I need to do. And he did a great job. I mean, he, d he did a great job. Uh, but he wasn't going to apologize to anybody. He's – but – he did, and, and saying it uh, helped him, I think, and, as well as, uh, you know, putting the shoe on, putting it on the other people. They had to watch out what they were doing, too.